Hey everyone, it's Victor here with Dapper Dash and there's a very, very big announcement. Uh, if you watch the February 2022 Power BI update video, it was announced there. In my opinion, it is probably the biggest update to Power BI. At least it's the one that I think is gonna impact the most people. This is not a tutorial video. I just wanna show you what's available and what's coming down the pipeline. It's actually available now if you have the latest version of Power BI. So let me show you the announcement that was made and then I'll show you how it works and what it's meant to do because it's, it's a big deal. In the data preparation section, Dynamic M query parameters now supports SQL Server and more data sources. Did you guys catch that? Because if you didn't, I'm going to play it again because it's a pretty big announcement. As a refresher, Dynamic M query parameters is a preview feature which allows report viewers to dynamically set the values for an M query parameter. So end users are now able to set the value for a query parameter inside of Power Query, meaning at the data source level. So using a slicer or a filter, the end user can click on something and they can actually change the data that is being pulled from the SQL query. Hopefully you're able to grasp how big of a deal that is. Um, if you don't grasp it yet, let me do some explaining so you can get an idea of why this is such a big deal for Power BI. Okay, now this isn't gonna be a tutorial on how to set up dynamic parameters with direct query, but I do wanna demo and give you a quick overview of what they're referring to with this update. This is querying a table in my SQL server, and that table is about 34 million records long. So let me show you what that query looks like. I parameterized it already. So what I've done is I've created an area parameter. This is kind of like a zip code parameter. And if I look, if you look here at the advanced editor, what I've done is I've gone to my server, I've gone to my database, and I'm running this query here. Select star from my table where area equals my area parameter. So this parameter is being passed into my SQL, SQL query. Now, this was available in the past, but not dynamically. What I mean by that is in the past, if you wanted to make a change to that query, you had to go edit parameters. You would then have to enter your new parameter, hit OK, apply the changes. It would have to refresh the data, but it is using that parameter. So at least the query is going to run a little faster. Now the problem with doing that is that when this was published to the server, the end user did not have the ability to come and edit parameters here. Okay, that, that's not an available feature to them. But what they've done now is, is they've allowed you to essentially bind a parameter to some sort of data column. And by doing that, you can now create a slicer based on that data column. And anytime you change the slicer, it's gonna change the parameter and on the back end, it's going to change the query. So you can see it's filtered my area to 17. Now you could accomplish this with direct query without having to use the dynamic parameter. But the problem with that is, is that every time you make a change to like your visuals or you add new visuals, Power BI has to send a call to the source data to refresh everything. And it's usually sending a query like this. But because we parameterized our query, it's now sending a query like this where this value here is our parameter. And because our end user can now actually set that parameter, right? They don't know that on the back end, every time they click a new fee, a new value in this slicer, they don't know that on the back end, that value is actually being passed into our query so that when it refreshes the live data, it's refreshing it using this value in the where clause. That was previously not available to end users. So if I come here into my model, I can show you that I've created this other uh, kind of table that has just a bunch of static values. And the column is called area. And what I've done is there's this bind to parameter. So I've bound this area column to my area parameter, meaning that every time that I change the value, every time that I click on a value 
in my area table, it's going to pass that value to my parameter, right? And on the back end, that parameter is going to get passed into my query and through my power query. And that's the query that's going to end up getting passed into my SQL server. So you can see when I, when I click on native, view native query, you can see exactly the query that is being passed into SQL server. That is so much faster. It is a much more optimized and performant query. And this is why dynamic parameters is such a big deal because it heavily cuts into that query time. Instead of sending the full query to the source to refresh your visuals, you're now sending a parameterized query. This is gonna subset the data and greatly increase the performance and the optimization of your Power BI model. There are some warnings though when you're doing this and Power BI will give you some warnings. Because you are working with dynamic parameters, you're essentially working with dynamic SQL. And if you've ever worked with dynamic SQL, there is a risk that comes with that. Um, so if you set this up, you'll get this warning. It says, when you allow report readers to dynamically set the values for the M query parameters, they're able to access additional data or they can trigger modifications to the source system depending how that parameter is set up. But other than that, I think this is a super cool feature. I'm really excited. Um, I hope you're as excited as I am about the capabilities of dynamic parameters with direct query. So direct query, Power BI embedded, anyone working with really large data sets, uh, this should be a huge, huge win. Uh, I'm really excited. I'm actually going to put a tutorial together on how to set up uh, a workbook uh, with dynamic parameters. And I'm going to show you how to build it, how to publish it. And then I'll show you how it looks like on the server side. So if I'm the business user, how I can click on uh, values without being able to see anything on the back end, um, without really knowing that I'm filtering things uh, actually against the data source. So this is very exciting. I hope you enjoyed this, this video. If you enjoyed it, uh, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, uh, help out the channel. I appreciate all the support and I'll catch you guys next time.